in the second part we're going to model the rest of the body and some tweaks here and there in the head. We're going to use some of the tools we already covered in the first part, but we will also learn some new ones. Um, this part is a speed up because I'm not really doing anything interesting. I'm reusing uh, most of the tools we already tried, like loop cut over there, smooth over there, and a lot, a lot of tweaking. Well, but that's modeling, you know. <laughs> I'm going to model a bit of the the tongue. So for that, I use the clipping. I clip the view with Alt B, so I can see better inside of the mouth. Then select, extrude, then smooth. When well, you see that that menu going really flashing really fast, that's me pre pressing W and then click for smooth because Blender remembers the last option you choose and just leave the the mouse uh, the mouse over there, so you can just W click W click all the time. It's awesome. You can also add a shortcut if you want. You can just right click over the smooth option and then select add shortcut. This shortcut will st will stay for as long as you have this blender open. If you want it to st to stay forever, you can do it on a default blender when you just open it and then save your settings. As you can see, it's a lot of tweaking. Here you have to decide for like how long your tongue is going to be. So you can uh, see how many loops you need for animation later. Now it's modeling the uh, uvula. That is pretty simple. It was just extruding and then smooth and extrude and smooth. Now uh, for the throat, the same, just select whatever you want and then extrude to the back. Some people like to go real, well, real, and then extrude more and more and more, but this is enough. Uh, I always extrude a little bit uh, to the inside chest, so when occlusion gets in, when, when lighting, makes that part uh, darker and doesn't get a lot of light. More smooth. And now I'll prepare this part so I can start extruding the rest of the body. Yeah, you can go all the way. <laughs> it's nice to just uh, start extruding and see how the proportions will work. Let's take a bit more. It's nice to have it good from the start. Smooth, smooth. Before keep going, I like to have a reference of the height of my character. So here I'm just moving everything up. So in edit mode I move my mesh and in object mode I move the eyes because they're a separate object. So I like to use the Y axis, the green one, as a reference to see how big my, my character or how tall my character is going to be. In this part where I'm going to close this part is like a cylinder, I'm going to close it, but I, I will not close it with the entire loop because that will look weird. I'm going to leave those, the top and the bottom, I'm going to join them and then use loop cut to uh, decide how many cuts I need and then close it nicely. So the loop that comes from the top of the head can loop nicely to the bottom and then go all over again to the face. So that's more uh, smooth and smooth and Alt-S for scaling along the normals, which is something I really use. 
if you see the shortcuts over there, you'll see that I use it all the time. Going to add more detail here. These loop cuts in the middle are just to, uh, when I add the legs right now in a second, I can have more uh, polygons over there. So uh, here, let's start making some room for the leg. I could use the knife tool, which will work, but uh, let's use the inset again. Inset gives you a bit more freedom, or more freedom, more controls. So I just select that, then press I to inset. It's proportional, so it's nicer. And then remove that vertex in the center. Now smooth that part. And now I have a nice loop around the leg that I can just extrude to the bottom and then have a nice uh, cylindric face. A nice cylindric uh, shape. Extrude, rotate a little bit, track ball rotation because it's R twice. And then move it all the way to the bottom. That way I can see like how long, how tall is going to be my character. Then uh, control R again to loop cut in some special parts where I need more polygons so I can bend the leg better. And at this point, I'm not really focusing on detail. It's just uh, like um, an overall shape that I want to have. Here I'm adding a little knee-like shape just by extruding one of the faces in the front. Remember, all this is going to be covered by fur, so we don't really care about a special, um, like a special shape to follow. Just remember everything will be fur. I'm going to close the, the legs really fast just so I can focus on the feet. Remember, it's always better to have um, like a general view of the shape of your character before going into detail. I could have spent hours, if I like, in the in the legs, but uh, it's nice to keep going and try to get an overall shape. Now, at the bottom, uh, as you can see, the the loops that went from that came from the leg, they were not co not flowing really well. They were stopped the way I did it. So, I could just delete that and make it again. But we could use another option, which is called edge rotate. You just select the edges and then hit edge rotate. Control E and edge rotate. Counter, uh, you can use uh, CW or CCWs, counter clockwise or clockwise. You can do it uh, with multiple edges, not all the time. It doesn't work really well all the time, especially if your edges are not even, if the number of edges are is not even, but it works most of the time on multiple edges. On single edges, it works always. This multiple edges option was added recently in Blender 2.62 with the B-Mesh, the new mesh system. So here I was trying something with the, um, with the legs, with a knife tool then using the vertex connect option to remove, to convert these end guns into quads. So, and this was just an experiment. I like to keep these parts just as you, like um, you see how I messed everything up. And at the end, I think I didn't do much, and then I will go back to this uh, later. 
that's another good thing to learn. It's like if you are stuck in one part of your model, just move on. Just uh, leave it not ugly enough and then move on with the rest of the body or any other shape. Now trying to find an, uh, an idea how to leave that. And the reason I leave it this way is because we're going to have fur later. So these faces will be emitting um, hair. And this shape, it may not look good in 3D, but with the, with the fur on top of it looks better, way better. Now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to select that part of the, of the mesh and then shift D to duplicate. That will duplicate a uh, part of my, my leg. I want to, I don't want to model the entire leg again. And they are different, of course, the, the front leg and the back leg. So the front leg and the one in the back, they are different. So uh, I'm going to do some tricking here now. Now I'm not going to leave it right I'm going to leave it exactly the same. So adding some more edge loops so the vertex count in the leg and the vertex count. So the vertex count in the body and in the leg they match. So I can use this new tool called edge bridge to edge loops. It's in the control E. So I can use this um, tool called bridge edge loops. And it doesn't work perfect every time. So you need to do some tweaking over there and then add some more polygons. And mm, I'm not really extremely happy with that. So what I'm going to do here now is is do it a bit more uh, up because actually the legs of the Wanakos or this character is uh, a bit more, starts a bit more up. Adding some more resolution over there. And now I will try to use again bridge to edge loops and it doesn't look that nice. And you can keep smoothing that and fixing manually but it doesn't look really nice. So what I'm going to use now is an add-on. This add-on has the same functionality but with some more options and it's all made in Python and it's really fast and it's awesome. So go to user preferences, control alt u then on add-ons tab and then mesh and search for mesh loop tools. Enable that and now in the W menu you will find on top of everything you will find a loop tools option with a bridge sub option. Click that and now let's play with the settings here in the last operator panel in the, in the T panel on the left. Some cool stuff that it has is that you can split it in many segments and you can even change the shape of this distortion. It's really good. So sometimes it works better than the, the one included on Blender by default. This might change, maybe they one day they put it for good, but it's always there, just look in the add-on section. And keep looking because there are many cool add-ons for modeling, for texturing, for all kinds of stuff. These add-ons are, uh, add are extensions made by developers from the community. Now modeling a bit of the tail which is pretty, pretty simple. It's just one one face extruded two times. That's it. Remember, all this is going to be covered by fur, so it's not a, a big deal. It's 
So now I'm going to speed up this a little bit. So, so now I'm going to speed up this a bit. It's not extremely fun, but I'm going to leave it. It's just a lot of tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. Moving individual vertices with uh, proportional editing enabled. The good thing is that, for example, if you click on a single vertex and hit S to scale, if you don't have proportional editing enabled, it's not going to do anything. You can't scale um, a single vertex. They, they don't have a, a size. But if you have proportional editing enabled, then it will affect the neighbor vertices, which is good. The same for rotation. You can't rotate a single vertex, but if you do it with proportional editing, then it works better. Here I'm just trying shapes, just trying to make uh, the character a bit more fat, for example, by selecting everything and hitting Alt-S for scaling along the normals. This Alt-S tool is called Shrink Flatten. more clicking and now let's model the ears. Going to slow down this again to real time so we can follow the process. I'm just trying selecting this because I like to have a, not to have extremely detailed but if I did it with only one face I wouldn't have enough vertices so I'm doing it with two faces and then extruding, rotating, here I'm rotating along a certain axis, which is the um, vertical axis, is the Z or Z. Then extrude again, trying to follow the shape. Looking from every angle. And now I'm going to remove part of the ear, so I can keep modeling the back of the ear first. So I remove the, the tip, the smooth, put the front a bit more to the inside so I can make a, like a convex shape, concave. Then extrude up and then keep extruding and extruding. Alt S to scale. And as you can see on the tip, I press F to make a face and I didn't notice that I actually have more than four vertices. So I had a, a Nengon and that's not really good. Let's try to make it a quad. I could make two triangles on every side and then close the tip, but that wouldn't work. It's not fun to have triangles. So what I could do and what I did was just joining the back and the front, then using loop cut to make a cut in between them and then joining the rest uh, of the, then joining, then making faces on the the little holes that I left there. Now let's start giving more shape. Alt S a lot. Then, oops, the vertices got connected over there. So for that, I have to disable clipping. Going to disable clipping so I can move the vertices yep, there, the faces. And they, they don't get stick. And now I'm going to make the inner part of the of the ears. I'm going to use the inset tool again. So I'm going to inset a little bit and now play with the settings. First, I'm going to uh, click on the offset relative and then move the thickness and the depth 
The thickness is just the same you do when you hit I and then move the mouse, that's the thickness. But the depth, what it makes, it pushes the this inset to um, the inside or the outside, which is nice. You can do it later on, of course, but it's nice that this tool already has it. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit because they are facing to the front, which is not always the case, how they are. I'm going to disable clipping for a little bit and then enable it again. Otherwise they wouldn't let me go to the other side because I'm editing with the cage enabled. or endless tweaking. I think the head was too big, so I'm just taking that part. Some of this proportion tweaking, we'll do it later in the sculpting tutorial. In the first part. Now I just want to see how this looks in render, so I just added a plane and now I'm going to uh, make a little little render because the shape look could look good, nice in the 3D view, but sometimes it doesn't in the actual render. So playing a bit with the nose, which was a bit too wide. At this point was a good thing to have the cage enabled for editing, but it's not always the case. Here I'm going to use another new tool, I'm going to slow down this a little bit, because I want to slide that vertex to uh, close to another edge. So with the vertex selected, I will do Ctrl V and then select Vertex Slide or Shift B, which is a shortcut. This option, once you have it enabled, lets you slide the vertex on the edge you select. So now it's just a quick, really quick lighting. And I will share the single preview so I can see a bit better. Enable ambient occlusion in add so I have light without actually putting some light, of ambient light.
Now I'm adding a little bit of uh, Fresnel or uh, like fall off effect, which is with the ramps. It's pretty fast. It's just to see the silhouette a bit better. And since I don't want the plane to be rendered, I just enable the shadows only option in the material for the uh, plane on the ground. Trying to make the nose a bit more flat. Trying to get the shape a bit more defined. And finally added a look cut there in the mouth so I can make it smile. Important, smiling is important. So now I'm actually trying to come back to this uh, part of the legs. Yes, trying to get that a bit better, it's not perfect, but it's a bit better and we'll tweak it in the next chapter and do some more uh, modeling over there. But I actually like sculpting in the next chapter. And that's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. We already have the entire character, pretty much. And now we're going to model some other little details and the eyelids, for example. Fine tuning.